EastEnders can only be described as a phenomenon. It has gripped the nation for 35 years and counting, finding itself on our television screens every week since February 1985. From Mick Carter to Dirty Den, from Pat Butcher to Shirley Carter, and from Kate Oates to Julie Smith. In this series of short films, let's have a look at just how this jewel in the BBC's crown happened. Ever since 1960 and the launch of ITV's flagship television programme, Coronation Street, the soap opera, or the bi-weekly serial as the BBC high-ups found a more flattering term, had been the business when it came to television. A soap opera initiates a compulsive and scheduled repeat viewing twice a week, with masses of audiences. And if the soap opera you have is a particularly good one, it can get all that as well as some record smashing viewing figures, which is just what the head of series and serials at the BBC, David Reed, wanted, especially as not only ITV's Coronation Street was killing the BBC in the ratings, but the recently launched Channel 4's new soap opera, Brookside, was doing very much the same. While soap operas were the speciality of ITV, the BBC had previously dabbled in moderately successful but short-lived bi-weekly serials in the past. The newcomers lasted only four years in the 1960s, but it was set in the country and showed a view of the world seldom seen by the vast majority of the viewing population. Likewise, so did Compact, which lasted for three years and couldn't be more different to the likes of ITV's Coronation Street. The 1970s, however, did bring the BBC something which held a lot of promise, angels. Originally, a standard television series lasting around 13 episodes focused upon a fictional hospital, but incoming producer for its fifth series, Julia Smith, thought the show was crying out to be made into a bi-weekly serial. However, due to the expense of a filming hospital drama, the show only ran in certain times of the year for a total of about 30 or so episodes, equaling about 15 weeks, so not a proper Coronation Street-like soap opera. In 1983, just as Angels had taken one final bow, David Reed wanted something far, far more ambitious. Reed approached Julia Smith, who had shown great promise with Angels, almost straight away sure that with her script editor Tony Holland, they would be able to find the BBC a popular bi-weekly 52 weeks of the year serial to grip the nation. While Smith and Holland were daunted by the responsibility and undertaking laid upon them, and a somewhat confusion for the very un-BBC-like programme they were being asked to explore making, they accepted. However, first they had both already signed up to make a different show, the Neris Hughes-led Welsh period drama, The District Nurse, and the BBC's prized by weekly serial had to be left out in the cold for a bit. By Christmas 1983, things were starting to come together. The main question on everyone's lips, however, wasn't the matter where it would be set, as that had been far from decided yet, but where on earth it would be made. The BBC had never attempted a show of this scale before, needing to be shot every week of the year, with continuous production and large enough studios for various different homes, places, all as standing sets as well, never to be taken down. Eventually, a man called Michael Checkland, the BBC's director of resources, managed to convince the bosses of the BBC to buy a closed down studio complex in a place called Elstree in Hertfordshire, which seemed to suit the needs of the production perfectly. The studio complex had previously been owned by Associated Television, which closed down in 1981, and it was where such shows as Emergency Ward 10, General Hospital, and The Muppet Show had previously been made. With the studios now purchased, which was a heavy financial gamble by the BBC for Christmas 1983, the show could begin being developed around what they could do in the facilities now available. While finishing the district nurse, Judy Smith was shown two ideas for the soap. The first was about a shopping arcade, which had been rejected due to the heavy and impractical technical considerations, and the second was about a mobile home park, which upon reading the pilot script, Tony Holland simply replied with, well I'm not doing that. The main reason he hated it was that the idea could work for maybe a six part serial, but 52 weeks of the year, every year? The format would be a little overstretched for a soap opera, he thought. In the new year, Judy Smith was summoned by the new head of series and serials, Jonathan Powell, who said he was banking on the new show being right, as it would be his first proper commission, and it was vital the BBC turned around their negative image in the press. It was during this meeting, it goes, that Powell simply said as an offhand comment that they should be making something about modern day London instead of all this other stuff. Smith was pleased, as that's exactly what she was thinking too. 
The main hurdle to get over now was that no one else wanted London soap. There had never been a successful soap opera based in the south of England. Coronation Street was set in Salford, and Brookside was set in Liverpool, or very, very, very north. So, they went about collecting some market research to persuade the BBC otherwise. The public were asked a simple question, Would you object to a new soap opera and television from the BBC which was set in the south of England? And people in the north mostly said while well, they prefer a new soap in the north, they wouldn't mind one in the south. People in the south said they were very much welcome a soap in the south, but wouldn't mind another in the north. And then the people in the Midlands said they'd love one anywhere, as long as it wasn't the Midlands. Through a fantastical turn of events, when presenting the market research to Powell, Smith and Holland had not been informed they would also be presenting it to Alan Hart, the controller of BBC One at the time, alongside an idea for the actual show. And from here they had but 40 minutes notice to come up with the founding bible of what would become EastEnders, before they laid it before Alan Hart. The documents laid out for the first time that the show would be set in a community in the East End of London and would include a healthy mix of multiracial and larger than life characters, as well as reflecting how life is today in a very disadvantaged part of the inner city. It's written out here that the show's location is to be a fairly run down Victorian square and that the families will play a large part in it, all of which still make up what EastEnders is about even today, 35 years on. And it proved popular, as the idea was sold to the Hyops in the sixth floor of the BBC Television Centre in a record 30 minutes, as beforehand the record holder was 9 weeks. One thing was left, a title for the show. After a long list of candidates, Smith and Holland came to one they were very, very fond of. They were certain would be a hit. Fantastic, they had the title. East 8. <laughs> <laughs>